Hello, everybody. Eight o'clock on Thursday, and it's it's been a four weeks since I saw you last, and uh, I hope you're very, very well, and that yeah, COVID is coming to an end, and that all is well with you and all your animals, uh, and all is all is good. Um, so uh, we are going to be talking about, uh, as you can see in the box just here, we have got, uh, we're going to be talking about caring for senior dogs. And we're going to take three broad uh, herb groups and we're going to look at very specific um, examples of those herb groups to teach us something about how to optimize our dog's senior years. Um, I think it's, 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 it's a really important topic. Uh, it's not one that one normally looks at with, with, uh, from, from a veterinary perspective, veterinary herbal perspective, but herbs are perfect in this scenario because they're really gentle, but really, um, really effective and you can use them long term and um i i think that that all of us and all our dogs i, I i'm absolutely certain that we can all benefit massively from from using it so let's uh, just uh, making sure that uh, everything's working so what i'm going to do without any further ado i'm going to uh go like uh, I'm going to swap us over so that I'm down there and the important stuff is up at the front and then I'm going to go next door like that and so now I can't see you guys I'm really sorry but I'll just um, wait for uh, Rosie just to say that she can hear me and she can see the screen hopefully that's all working well I pray it is and so what we're not we're not going to be talking t tonight about um, hydrotherapy and um, exercise regimes and you know all all that kind of stuff. We're really going to be honing into the whole area of of herbs and and what we can do. We're going to start with a the adaptogens and we're going to use withania ast uh, ashwagandha as our as our example there i think it's always good because we've got such a short time to to really focus in on one and actually it is probably one of the most useful for for when we are uh, uh looking at the older dog then we're going to look at echinacea now you probably think oh i know a bit about echinacea i promise you you don't we've got lots and lots of really interesting aspects of echinacea to look at and then we're going to look at pain herbs and the one that i've selected is called boswellia uh, frankincense and we're going to be um we're going to be uh really looking quite hard at that but then we're going to round up with all the all the pain herbs so lots to do lots of interesting stuff to look at so let's crack on so withania ashwagandha uh, it is it's the winter cherry as you see very kind of cherry like um, fruit there and it's been used in the Ind Indian tradition for thousands of years um, in Ayurvedic it's known as ashwagandha which means strength of a horse so that immediately uh, gives us a giveaway that if your dog is suffering from weakness then uh it might be a very useful herb to be thinking about it is an adaptogen and what what's an adaptogen let's just go through our little list here adaptogens generally increase secretion of glucocorticoids in response to injury or infection and it is to and to prevent uh, defense mechanisms from overreacting so it it reduces overreaction so withania is useful to to use if you've got autoimmune disease for example um, or somewhere where the uh, 
of a high glucocorticoid. So Cushing's disease uh, it might be useful in the older dog with that in, in those kind of um, situations. Um, it, it's the adapt adaptogens. Again, they are a group of herbs that were that were kind of all brought together in the in the sixties because they were known to help with acute, that is short acting stress and chronic stress. Most famously, and I love this, is that the Russians used um, Siberian ginseng with their cosmonauts. You know, they used to, the Americans would send up the Apollo uh, astronauts for, you know, three, four, five, six, seven days, but the the Russians <laughs> probably to save on on spaceships and fuel and things like that would put them up in the Soyuz uh, spaceships for months and months and months on end. And because that's a very stressful, fatiguing environment, um, they looked at herbs, which is incredibly foresight foresightful of them to help them to help the the cosmonauts cope with living in space and and so that's really where it came came around came when everybody started to know about siberian ginseng and everybody started taking it themselves and and to this day i think we can all benefit actually from uh, siberian ginseng so what i'm saying is that withania is within that family of the the stress and fatigue um, herbs called the adaptogens because they allow you to adapt to stress. They improve your adaptability and your, your ability to um, reduce naturally uh, your stress responses. They, they go from, they're quite a big group of, oh, there's probably about a dozen common adaptogens and they go from the very mild uh, one. There's we've got a a, uh, a herb called goji cola, which is fascinating, uh, all the way through to the strongest of the adaptogens, which is called Panax ginseng, which is used um, in, uh, in in mainly in male uh, humans and dogs, and it's it's uh, yeah so strong that if you get it wrong you can actually uh, make the disease process worse. So uh, we, it's, it's one to be used with care. So I'm not going to be mentioning it today. We're going we're to stick with withania. Uh, and you'll notice withania, the, uh, the, name is, the full name is withania somnifera. And that kind of gives you a clue. Somnifera, somnolent, it's, it's calming, okay? It's mildly tranquilizing and as we antispasmodic. And that's why it's called withania somnifera, somnifera sleepy. OK, it's the only adaptogen. So it helps. It builds you up, strengthens you up, helps your stress response is generally unbelievably useful for the older animal, the older person. But it's but it's calming. OK, so if there are anxiety issues with the with that older, uh, older animal, then withania is a is a fantastic uh, herb to have on your side so what what are some of the effects that that we, that we think about when we're looking at withania we've got stress modulation because it's an adaptogen yes they all do that that's great uh anxiety relief as i say it's good for where where we have the older animal with anxiety what is not uh recognized quite so much is it can help with cognition the older the older animals you know you and i and your old dog is going to get a little bit confused sooner or later and so withania it really is a gift to 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 those older dogs um in addition we've got cardiovascular and circulatory support which is great because those always go as you get older it's anti-inflammatory because everybody is guaranteed to get arthritis when as they get older um it's 
so so it's just tailor made for the older animal. I think you know I I I, I use it with loads and loads and loads of older animals i i will often use it with astragalus astragalus is when you're struggling and and struggling to survive and you just need a little strength okay ruthenia and astragalus go together really beautifully um also used for rejuvenating convalescence yeah so any dog whether they're older or younger where they need a bit of help with with uh recovering from um uh, an accident or an operation or pup, having pu just had pups um anything like that then with any would be absolutely great and it's so gentle and its safety margin is a mile high you, can, you really can't go wrong with with any ashwagandha it's a, a lovely uh lovely herb to use and you know what if, if any of the, this um rings bells for you then you know you can get hold of 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 of, of withania for humans as well um and finally uh withania strength for horse it helps to increase muscle mass and strength so with 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 the older dog the atrophy of muscle is is pretty inevitable in in, in most older animals and so uh withania is just a, a wonderful wonderful herb to have on hand okay so you heard it here guys um a few more uses uh this which which disease processes specifically has it been known to be very useful with so aspergillosis aspergillus is a is a uh is a um a mold and um it is classically you get some dogs if you're really unfortunate you can get it in your sinuses and up your nose and it can cause you know horrible purulent discharge um and withania has been used to help to treat aspergillosis um there have been uh, quite a number of um uh, stress studies and it's shown to, to help um rats and other unfortunate animals sadly uh it really helps with stress uh osteoarthritis yeah because it's anti-inflammatory cognitive dysfunction as we've just said which is why it's so good for for um these oldies um if your dog's on long-term prednisolone if you've got an itchy dog and they're on long-term prednisolone and you're thinking crumbs i'd really really like um something the dog obviously needs something apart from anything else if you're on pred for a long time your muscles will weaken and there will be degree of atrophy and so um strength of a horse ashwagandha is going to be uh, very useful um hypothyroid disease is very uh it's a lot more common than i was taught when i came out of college um if you want to learn about um about hypothyroid disease well, bear with me i'll grab my book um then the book you need to read is i hope you can see this uh is um so it's by gene dodds and it's called the canine thyroid epidemic okay that's there um uh, uh, uh if you didn't get that then um contact uh, me or rosie and we will give you a, a reference gene dodd j-e-a-n-d-o-d-d-s gene dodds the canine thyroid epidemic so uh classically we i was taught that hypothyroid dogs are are overweight they are chilly and they are apathetic and actually some of them are but many of them are not 40 percent of dogs of, of of aggressive dogs in the in the united states for example this is from gene dodd's book are aggressive yeah which is not what you would you would think um epilepsy can be one of the first signs of hypothyroidism is another uh, is another thing so if you've got an epileptic dog make sure you get i would suggest get some blood to gene dodds at hemopet in the united states is a very very good idea anyway back to withania sorry um 
So one can use it to help the body upregulate the thyroid. And in some uh, in some of the um, studies, it's it's increased the T4, your thyroxine level in your blood, to by over a hundred percent. Okay, which is really really handy indeed so if you've got a uh, hypothyroid if your dogs or you have got hypothyroidism then speak to your doctor vet about withania uh anemia convalescence that's kind of uh, slightly obvious cancer support yeah all that business about maintaining muscle mass uh, uh helping with anxiety maintaining strength and and helping against fatigue i think in cancer that's an absolute must and for the same reason, uh, helping the older patient. So there you go. Withania, I just I can't, I can't say enough good things about Withania ashwagandha. It really is a wonderful, wonderful, and most old dogs can benefit from it. So what are the other adaptogens? Well, we've got the Siberian ginseng, as I say, that's what they use with the cosmonauts. Romania is another of the Romania glutinosa it tastes great it's very sweet uh, and we I use it for my children it's a it's a very uh, for, for if they're ill or if they're recuperating then uh, Romania is a wonderful tonic if you like go to cola is in the Chinese tradition go to cola uh, which is known as centella centella asiatica but go to cola is kind of a common name it's called the spring of life because there's one Chinese uh, herbalist who took it and lived for 200 years, apparently. It's in the books. That's what it says. Um, Bacopa is, is the, uh, the Brahmi herb. These are the, the wise men who wander around India. And so Bacopa is the, is the adaptogen to take for fatigue before exams and it helps to focus the mind as well. So that's exciting stuff. Licorice, everybody knows licorice. It's a, um, it's, it's anti-inflammatory, helps again if you're on steroid. Um, the Chinese use it in their formulas to, to bind other herbs together. It's a kind of, uh, it's like an, um, I was thinking it's like having a grandfather at the wedding so that nobody fights. <laughs> it kind of brings everybody together. It's lovely. So uh, licorice is good. It makes kind of slightly sweet as well. So uh, it makes a, an otherwise bitter formula a little bit uh, more palatable. Astragalus has similar qualities to echinacea. And as I say, often we'll use withania and, ast and astragalus together. Shizandra is wonderful. It's a little bit like a Chinese version of milk thistle, uh, very good for liver and kidney uh, function, as well as being an adaptogen. So, so very good for strength and fatigue and um, um, those classic uh, adaptogen traits okay so there you go that's and you know as you can tell uh, i love adaptogens let me just check the time so that i don't detain you any longer than you want to be um so what's next echinacea so you think you know about echinacea yep great you don't there's lots 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 more to be said about echinacea so it's the purple clone flower uh it's called uh echinacea because ec echina is uh, related to uh, hedgehog, and if you look at the the, uh, the the flower, it's very it looks spiky, and so they called it echinacea. Um, there are two major types: purpurea and angustifolia. Um, and kind of everybody knows you take echinacea when you when you're about to get a cold or if you've got a cold. Okay, right. But how does it actually work? There is some good studies to say that actually it boosts the natural killer cells, which are T cells within your immune system, which zap viruses and bacteria. OK, this we know when you take echinacea, those natural killer cells are boosted. They're raised. Um, so very good against infection. Um, it, the, the echinacea is known to slow down and turn around the 
natural drift of what happens as you get older you lose your natural killer cells and so you can uh, infections you know when you get older you can get in pneumonia is quite common for example well taking echinacea and you can take it over a long period um will reduce that um degradation of your of your natural killer cells which is uh, you know a key function of your immune uh, immune system so i think all old older animals older people come to that can benefit from being on echinacea so if it was up to me i'd have all all the oldies in the country on withania and echinacea okay and I'll, here's a few more reasons why so it's good for respiratory uh, infections everybody knows that okay but what else is it good for here we go let's have a look so very good for urinary tract infections for um thrush yeah vaginal yeast infections for thrush really wonderful herpes yeah little kind of uh, lesions here hiv and aids because natural killer cells are, are, are damped down and, and your t-cell uh, function is is inhibited and echinacea uh, helps to um, uh, uh, build those up um, papillomavirus is you know at the, the, the very least will cause uh, warts and the very worst will cause cervical cancer in women and so echinacea is a good idea um, what's the best way to take echinacea you can take it continually but i think that taking it two weeks every month might be better to be honest um with ania with ania you can take long term but i think echinacea just kind of pulsatile would be would be probably the best way to go it's good if you've got septicemia but if you've got septicemia you're going to be on an antibiotic but um even so i think echinacea is a great thing to have uh, around there uh, diphtheria if you have diphtheria you definitely be on an antibiotic um, but echinacea is not going to do you any harm um, you know uh, as, a, as, a, as a preventative as a, to, to help with all respiratory disease tonsillitis, tonsillitis strep throats syphilis typhoid malaria ear infections swine flu warts um, you know it's a it's it almost helps with any type of infection anywhere in the body it's that wonderful and there's even this is a 2003 study it uh, and there's it's uh i was going to say it, there's even been some work it's it's so powerful and so useful there's even been some work for uh that demonstrates the uh for treatment of uh chronic seasonal upper respiratory tract infections okay so this is essentially kennel cough and the this paper says these data suggest that echinacea echinacea preparation can be recommended as a well tolerated alternative to uh uh canine upper respiratory tract infections okay so if one of your dogs gets kennel cough then i think that using echinacea with the other is a great idea or if one of your children gets a cold and you don't want the rest of the family to get it then echinacea for everybody great idea okay so echinacea any type of infection that's really what i'm trying to say it's don't don't think of it narrow i've got a cold echinacea no any type of infection think about echinacea it doesn't stop there there is there are more uses as well let's just have a look at those not a lot of people know that it can be used for anxiety and adhd which is really really interesting so it does have there are um uh, cognitive uh, uh, uses as well low blood, blood white blood cell count you can imagine chronic fatigue so it's almost an, an adaptogen uh, there it helps to build you up which is why it's so good for the oldies because it's a builder upper it's a it's a let's get strong type herb rheumatoid arthritis um, um, because of the uh, immune effects migraines you know not a lot of people know about that indigestion pain it's a bitter so that can help with indigestion um, 
pain it has a mild pain relieving effect dizziness yeah vertigo this kind of thing um it has been used to help with these things exercise performance is strengthening again a little bit of adaptogen very good for the oldies um and you can use it topically as well for boils and gum disease and abscesses skin wounds this is for horses as well you can use it for, for cats as well in fact you can use echinacea for cats it's very good because they get a lot of um when they're young they can get with um uh, respiratory disease and cat flu and things like that so wounds um skin um sun damage herpes simplex yeast bee stings snake and mosquito bites even hemorrhoids there you go that we got to the bottom of echinacea i think um okay let's talk about pain okay so we've got we've got this the, the, the strengthening and the, the the anxiety uh helpers with our adaptogens we've got boosting our immune system in a really big way with our echinacea okay so w e with echinacea and this is b web this is the this is the combo that I would suggest the web combo to support your older dog, and so Boswellia. Let's look at Boswellia. Other names: Google. Uh, it contains Boswellin, is one of the active uh, ingredients within it, and it's frankincense. Okay, um, it's very been very well studied. Um, tastes a bit like um uh floor polish because what's floor polish but it's, it's a type of resin so it does actually taste like floor polish so sometimes difficult to get into some dogs but you can get it in capsule form um and it's the, it, basically boswellic acids are anti-inflammatory but they uh they don't work like non-steroidal so you can use it alongside metacam or um um simeljex or galaprant or or any of these things you can use it um in inhibits pro-inflammatory mediators um such as the leukotrienes and and therefore the thing to remember is you can use it as well okay uh probably the most difficult thing is getting hold of it um we use it at the practice here very very useful indeed um isn't that a beautiful picture? I came across that. I just wanted something to show how strong and sturdy and, you know, the fact it's growing in the middle of the desert all on its own, you'd have to be tough to, to do that. And you'd have to have, you know, your resin would, would have to defend you from insects and being eaten because you're, you're the only thing that can be eaten for miles away around. So, um, Boswellia is is just a very robust. If you take the resin and you dry it, it comes out as um, uh, kind of lumps like that, size of gravel, big gravel, and you then you can crush that into powder and you can use it as a, a in a herbal form, or you can make it into a a, a tincture. So. Um, some obvious uses here we've got uh, bursitis where you've got so uh housemaid's knee is bursitis tendonitis is where your tendon has been uh um is, is inflamed so rsi for example is tendonitis uh osteoarthritis is is bone um joint inflammation and rheumatoid arthritis is where your body is attacking your joints okay all of those can benefit from from boswellia remember web withania echinacea boswellia if this is the web to support your older dog also wonderful to use i often use it in ibd cases when we're just starting off just calm 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 that gut um hopefully we'll get them onto a raw food diet and they won't need um uh, the anti-inflammatory for long but just to start off with a great a great way to go boswellia has been used for asthma asthma hay fever and sore throats um so it's got a it's got quite a strong anti-inflammatory uh action in the respiratory uh tree um also for brain injury 
amazingly, you know. So if concussion and uh, head injury from RTAs, um, gen uh, bruises uh, generally, or even headaches, actually, yeah, you, you, we would use um, um, we would use Boswellia in a in a headache situation. Again, syphilis, um, and that would be used topically and maybe taken by mouth but, uh, because it's very anti-inflammatory and it's strongly antibacterial yeah it's resin it's yeah um also good for you know for pain generally but specifically in in in, in women it's been used for menstruation pain um it's been used for diabetes which is very very interesting uh to helping to um regulate insulin and glucose metabolism which is very very interesting and also cancer so not just for the pain of cancer but also to to help to um uh, support the body uh, uh during cancer um it's final one here is it's a stimulant to help the flow it helps to increase urine flow and menstrual uh flow so think boswellia think flow is 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 good um so finally uh, other pain herbs um the one that we all know is white willow because that's where aspirin originally came from um uh in fact i th think i just i think i think i think that i because i was raised in chipping norton and there was a story I heard that it, the first person to use white willow was one of the clergymen in Chipping Norton. And he went, because there were willow trees down by the brook where we used to play as kids. I'm not that old. I'm talking about the 17, 17, mid 1700s. And he, he would use uh, a concoction of white willow as a painkiller because it contains salicylates okay um salicylates so the first aspirin type drugs came from white willow and then the americans used aspira filipendula for willow which is where we get aspirin aspira filipendula okay so there you go nice little story for you um other pain herbs believe it or not ginger is a is a fantastic uh, pain herb especially if you've got arthritis that is worse in winter because obviously ginger is very warming yeah the chinese like to use warming herbs in winter uh another um less warming than ginger but warming nonetheless and very anti-cancer is turmeric okay turmeric um turmeric for tumors um so it's it's very useful for the older dog um and in, if there's a cancer scenario as well wonderful for the gut and for healing the gut um so that's that's a wonderful one to use and super 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 um safe to use ginger the only problem with ginger is that some dogs don't like the taste of ginger and so they'll reject it if they're given it harpacophyton procumbens is a lovely word for devil's claw and that can be a very uh, useful one to use and it's really quite a safe um herb to use for killing pain nettle urtica is uh again another it's very mild and you can use it for um um burns and stings and um inflammation uh as well and um urticaria um so that's nettle and one of my favorite uh, names is Menyanthes. Menyanthes is 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 a UK uh, bog bean. It's a water um, a water uh, herb, and it's 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 uh, a wonderful pain herb. Um, and that picture there is of white willow. Just for that, um, that's us. Uh, so today we have looked at withania, the calming, strengthening adaptogen, uh, W, E, echinacea, for boosting for infections, but not just infection, so much more. And B, for pain, but so much more. Okay, so these are the ones. So if you've got an oldie, have a 
really good think about withania echinacea and boswellia you can run them together and you can you can give them over long periods uh with any of definitely long periods echinacea i would go two weeks on two weeks off uh and with boswellia you can use that for uh, uh, extended periods as well um okay uh i think yep that's us so let me come back to you um and uh just say hello to everybody uh, do, do, uh gail thank you very much for putting up the uh gail where are you gail? Do, 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 do. oh yeah there you are there. um i mentioned about hemopet and gail is very kindly um um let me come back to see you by the way guys let me come back to see you i'm gonna hide that and then i come back there okay good um so um if you want to send blood to the states um you, you, you all the information is there on hemopet um if it's a pain and it is a pain you can get your your practice to send the blood to me uh because we send bloods off to uh gene dodds every week every two weeks or so okay and it's just you have to fill out all the forms in triplicate and then and nowadays since brexit there are all the extra forms at the at the post office but we we're past masters i've been sending blood to gene for 25 years yeah it's wonderful stuff um uh, lisa lisa gory thank you very much for for saying she enjoyed it that's really really good um um guys any any oh gosh well, um yeah i was just looking for any questions <laughs> i'm not going guys i'm not going uh does anybody have any questions all right let's have a look what dosage should you use for each of these depends on on whether you're using a, a, a tincture or or dried herb really so i think um and it depends on on the formulation if you get a combined formula then the, the dosing will be will be different um if you need to look for doses there's a wonderful book called um uh let's see have i got it handy uh it's called veterinary herbal medicine or else would it be called by win and fougere w-y-n-n-e susan win and barbara fougere f-o-u-g-e-r-e and so that's 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 great um let's have a look jane johnson devil's claw uh let's put up jane's thing um i wouldn't use it long term i wouldn't use it long term boss really can use longer uh echinacea on and off like i say and with any you can use long term um uh, zeb says stinging uh here we go zeb says stinging nettle or dead nettle stinging nettle Ertica dioca is the stinging nettle. Good question there. Um, uh, Rachel says, I'll do a couple more questions. Uh, Rachel says, uh, what's best for dogs? If you've got a big black dog there by the look of it, Rachel, and if his her appetite is good, then you, you can get away with any of them if you've got a fussy dog then use the other uh, tablets or capsules i would suggest um and uh brands we get our herbs from um what are they called he says rutland rutland biodynamic um and also balance healthcare in kingham in oxfordshire uh they they, they do herbs and uh they're very good um there we go let's have a look at another couple uh -huh. <laughs> karen she's funny karen um tell about the dog i need this yeah we're all going to get old and we can all benefit from herbs that's for sure so i i'd i'd get amongst it find yourself a, a herbalist and and have a chat um it's wonderful stuff it's really very safe stuff um and uh uh, uh d says the same great d thanks a lot um <laughs> jane johnson 
very funny. Managed to dodge syphilis so far. I don't know. <laughs> Herbalists are obsessed with syphilis. I think it's because it was, you know, back in you know, 200 years ago, there wasn't anything else except herbs. And so I think that they, they uh, people are still, um, people are still very, um, they still kind of hark back to the days of Culpeper when they had to use herbs for these things. Okay. Last question, Zeb, let's see what Zeb says. Off topic, so please ignore if not acceptable. Is rosemary safe for dogs? Yes, it is. Um, it is, it, uh, I did mention that don't use rosemary if you, did I? No, I did a talk before this and I mentioned rosemary. Um, basically, rosemary is quite stimulatory. So if you've got, you know, really hyper uh, uh, span, um, springers or collies, then just give rosemary a miss. It won't induce fits in non-epileptic dogs, but if you've got a really, sen se really sensitive epileptic dog and you give lots of rosemary, you might push them towards a more fits than they would otherwise go. Um, rosemary, if, if, if there's no epilepsy uh, in the picture, then uh, rosemary is fantastic. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, you know, as the song says, are wonderful herbs to use for all sorts of things. It's good for digestion. It's very uh, antioxidant. It's anti antiviral. It's good for the, um, um, the, the, the lungs because it's so aromatic. Um, so, yeah, rosemary is a, a great a great herb so um let's have a look um i can't remember what we're doing next uh let's have a look um uh rosie is saying here um we have a oh we've got a discount code running uh the good people of vermex who allow me to do this show thank you very much vermex for for um supporting us says if you go to the vermex um or if you contact Vermex or you make an order online and you use the code FRESH10, F-R-E-S-H, FRESH10, until tomorrow night, um, then you will get, it looks like, 10% off your order, which is good of them. So thank you again, Vermex, for, for doing that, helping us to all use herbs. That's brilliant. And I'm just going to look at the one two three four ah we are in four weeks time guys we're going to do worms and domesticated animals fabulous okay worms and domesticated animals in four weeks time four weeks time um i'm going to stop waffling on because you've got an evening to get on with um we've gone way over i apologize but it's great to see so many people getting enthusiastic about herbs, about doing the best for their old dogs at home. Crack on, do your homework, find your nearest um, herbal vet. The Let's have a look. It's the uh, ABVH, the Association of British Veterinary Herbalists. If you go on there, you'll, find, you'll, you'll be able to find where the nearest herbal vet to you is and you'll be able to talk to them. Uh, about about getting the webs into your older older animal exciting stuff thank you very much um uh, my name's nick thompson i am on this called the gut doctor and uh i want to thank you for a great evening appreciate it thank you <laughs>